Today we're going to look at repowering a 120 sled for competition purposes. As with any modification to this level, if you're not comfortable with it, we recommend contacting any one of our 200 plus motorsports dealers. They can be located right on our website, which is www.briggsracing.com. We also have specialists in, in the snowmobile world that at the end of this video we'll put up. Let's get started. We've got our standard tool set which will highlight the tools needed as we go through the repower. Everything centers around our 206 racing engine. This is hand built right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin to a rule set that is factory written. And then what's unique about this, it's a crate engine concept. So we've got two seals in the bottom to simplify uh, the program and, and the tech. So you pull it out of the box, power it in your sled. One engine fits four sleds so you've got a single engine for competition. So we've got our 206 engine, we've got our aftermarket green air filter which is also available through our dealers. As you can see 206 engines, the control cover has a slight tilt to it. Future ones will not have that tilt to it as you can see here and then in some sleds it'll require modifying this to clear the steering column. So please be aware, when we do that, we'll highlight it for you. Aftermarket exhaust system, header wrap. Uh, this is an RLV system. B91 silencer, also from RLV. There's also a REC Motorsports system available. We need chain. This is an aftermarket performance chain available also through our dealers. We have a aftermarket driver hub. We're going to go with a 40 rear gear and with the max torque clutch we're going to use a 17 driver. When we start going through this there, there are some minute differences between the sleds and also depending on age so please be aware of that. The Polaris because of the original engine layout requires a slight different approach. Uh, to putting the engine in. This is a set of shims and basically what this does, it tips the engine forward so you get clearance on the firewall. Also improving the clearance on the firewall is a valve cover that has a much lower profile. On earlier Polaris snowmobiles you will need to amplify the, the throttle input. So this is a simple aftermarket system. This one's fourcyclecentral.com uh, but it's available through several of our dealers. You're going to need an aftermarket throttle kit which is also readily available. On early skidoos this will give you an example of the steering column cut out. So as, as we put this in we'll highlight it again and you just need to make sure you have clearance left and right when, when you put the engine in. One of the things we recommend as, as a pure aftermarket item is an aftermarket chain tensioner. We're putting almost three times the horsepower through the stock sled. So this is just a good component to have. This one's made by Rec Motorsports. So with that said, let's look at repowering. This is the Articat 120 that we're going to repower today. The first thing we've done is evacuated all the fuel from the system, including the carburetor bowl itself. We've dis disengaged the spark plug. We've also removed the key. So the first steps after that is to remove the, the chain guard. So that's three Torx head screws. And then we're also going to remove the secondary which are four five sixteenths. Now that we've removed the clutch cover and the secondary cover, we're going to remove the exhaust, which is two ten millimeter, and we're going to remove the clutch and the secondary gear, which are both half inch. With the exhaust removed, that's allowed us to take the clutch and the secondary driver and chain out as a single assembly. Now we will look at removing the three half-inch fasteners that are holding the engine to the firewall. Now we're going to get underneath the sled and remove the four rubber biscuits that are going to give us access to the engine mount. We're also going to look at removing the steering column to allow us access to remove the engine. Now that the steering column is, is out of the way and moved to the side, we have access to the underneath of the engine. We're going to go ahead and remove the fuel intake. Remember we've gone ahead and, and evacuated all the fuel. We'll plug it for safety. We're going to remove the throttle linkage, the choke cable, and then we're also going to undo the rewind so we can actually pull it through the firewall. 
And then once that's done, we can go ahead and, and loosen up the four fasteners holding the engine in place and remove the engine. So now we've removed the engine. We've taken the 206 engine, we've dropped it in. We put the motor mount bolts back in place. It's, it's a stock configuration, so there's no modifications uh, outside of refastening it up. The same with the firewall bolts. We put those back in place. We put the brake back in place. The chain tensioner is now in place, just reversing out the steps. And we've also gone ahead and fished the rewind through. So basically, we've extended it through, retied the knot. Now we're going to go ahead and we've, we've converted the stock clutch to a 17-2 driver. We have our aftermarket uh, gear hub for the secondary. We've got our, our 40 driver, and then we've got our chain. So we're gonna go ahead and redo the drive system right now, and that'll be the next step. So now we have the driver, the clutch, and the chain in place. We put the secondary cover back on. We've also put the chain guard back on. The next step we're gonna do is the, the throttle cable, which will take a slight modification. I'll, I'll walk you through the steps. First thing we're gonna do here is take a pair of snips and we're gonna cut right below the housing here. Then we're gonna secondary cut the ball off. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to be able to pull the cable out uh, from the throttle uh, side. And then we will work backwards. We have a new cable which will feed back from the throttle down to the carburetor side. We'll hook it up to the, th uh, to the, the slide in the carburetor, button everything back up, and then we'll put a barrel stop uh, on the throttle side, and then we're done. Now that we have the throttle linkage in, in place and fully functional, it's been checked to make sure that we have full throttle and full throttle return. The next thing we're going to do is put the exhaust on. There's two exhaust systems. In this case, we're going to go with this style. Uh, one exits on the clutch side of the engine and the other exits opposite on the rewind side of the engine. The reason we're going to go with this one is it's going to allow us to do any gear changing that we need to make uh, to react to the track, track layout, track conditions. So what we've done here is we've gone ahead and used header wrap and safety tied it in place. It's just a lot easier to do it before you put the exhaust on the engine. We've got our header bolt kit here with washer, fasteners, We've loosened up on the blower housing where the bracket will attach to, and we've gone ahead and laid this out on the engine and drilled a single hole two and a half inches through the body, and that'll allow the exhaust to go out. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in place, and then we'll go to the next step. With the exhaust now in place, check so we have plenty of clearance for the exhaust to, to exit the main chassis. We're gonna go ahead and hook up the steering column and also patch in the kill switch to the engine so everything functions properly as it should. Now that we have the steering column put back in place, we've tapped the electrical system into the engine to make sure that it's fully functional, all the kill switches. We'll go ahead and hook up the fuel line, turn the fuel back on and make sure we have no leaks. We'll add our, our green air filter. We've added 14 ounces of AMSOIL 4T. We'll double check every system, make sure the throttle travels smoothly goes back to idle. We'll check it at the carburetor. We'll also check it at, at the thumb throttle. We've checked our brake system. The last step we'll do one last round of power testing to ensure complete functionality and the repower is complete.